At, at this point, you were you just been kind of freshly refinanced as Summit Mark II. Is it worse? So were you able? Because this was a forty million dollar mm. negative cost, something like that. Yeah, were, we, you, were you able to bankroll this and then to cover yourselves out? We we went. Uh, this was about well, actually almost exactly three years ago. We um, because prior to our life in our current incarnation, we were a much smaller, independent, international. Mainly sales and distribution company. We were investing some little bits of money in our own pictures, um, but we decided we needed to step up. And we, and this is really cutting a long story short, we we partnered up with Rob Freeman, who was setting up his own domestic distribution company. And Merrill Lynch was helping him raise money. Merrill Lynch were also looking at us, and we decided, um, like the song with sort of you know the roller skate and the brand new key, that actually together we could do something wonderful. So Merrill Lynch basically helped put us together, create this new global entity, and we went out and raised about about $1.2 billion um, just before the market crashed. So we got in just under the wire. Um, we launched the new company in April three years ago, um, and <clears throat> we got off to a terrible start. Um, we in our previous incarnation, we made, we decided in our wisdom to make a little film called P2, which was a six million dollar um, terror movie about a woman alone on Christmas Eve, stuck in an underground car park, being stalked by the security guy. Um, it was made really as a low budget genre film. We'd sold it terribly well internationally. We had almost nothing up against it for domestic and our original plan had been just to release it on DVD domestically because we didn't have our own domestic distribution operation at the time. With this new company we suddenly had a domestic distribution operation and in our wisdom because we had nothing in the pipeline we thought we'd, well, we had this film anyway let's see how we do we spent a ludicrous amount of money releasing it and um, we got off to a fine start and probably lost about $20 million on this tiny $6 million because we, you know, we lost all the p and It did a terrible business. Uh, we released probably a couple of other films after that um, that put a serious dent in our, in our finances. I'm being incredibly indiscreet, but by the, time, <laughs> by the time it got to October in our first six months of being in business, we looked like yet another example of an idiot independent company that thought they could break into the US distribution business and you know and and our shareholders and our, our board were all looking at us thinking guys you know you've been here for six months you've just lost so much money already and it was uh, um, I'd say four weeks before Twilight was opening it got to the point where if you wanted a pencil, you'd have to go out and buy it yourself because things were looking really, really, really bad. And we were beginning to get a hint, however, that Twilight was looking like something very um, positive. We had no idea it was going to be as spectacular as it was, but, you know, basically Twilight completely turned our fortunes around. And, um, uh, and we are now in a very healthy financial position thanks to that film um, I would say there was a lot of luck timing involved if that film had not been being released for another three or four months uh, I certainly wouldn't be sitting here in the capacity that I am now I might be doing something else or, um, but anyway um, but uh, it's a very long story um, but and you know since then we've gone on to actually have some other successes so we're not just um, dependent upon, thankfully, dependent on a vampire and his girlfriend to keep us going, but it's obviously played a very large part in our success and I can fill you in on more details later if you want to, but I don't want to hog the stage with Twilight, because you're probably all sick to death of Twilight anyway. Just <laughs> not my kids, I can tell you that. The, um, <clears throat> so you, you're in, actually your, your business is quite broad in terms of what you do, uh, packaging uh, a movie entirely yourself, as you did in this yeah. case, is not the only thing you do. You do negative pickups, and I think Hurt Locker was one of your success stories, too. Yes, I mean, Hurt her, her Locker, you know, it's very, uh, um, you could say there's an element of judgment, an element of luck involved. Hurt Locker, we picked up at Toronto two years ago as a finished film. We, we acquired it for US domestic rights. 
we genuinely we love the film and we genuinely thought no one's going to go and want to come and see it but we'll give it a go anyway i mean we really didn't we you know we picked it up for one and a half million dollars um we thought it would probably go we'd try a little platform release but if it didn't work we'd just go straight to dvd um and uh, the rest is history but it was but it just got the most spectacular reviews and that was actually quite an interesting story in that we started off you know we spent we ended up spending 9 million dollars on pna releasing the film in the states started off with a little platform release the reviews were so great we went wide um we ended up doing about 12 million dollars box office and this is before any of the award season so we we'd, we'd already done our theatrical run on it finished <clears throat> And we reckon that probably through the theatrical and DVD and television windows, we might end up, after everything, making a profit of about a million dollars. Then, disaster. Um, the award season was coming up, and huge pressure from the filmmakers and everyone in Hollywood for us to do an Academy Awards campaign. So there was a prospect of us making a tiny little bit of money on the film, and... Guess what? You know, you have to spend at least one and a half million dollars, at least one and a half million dollars on an Academy Awards campaign. Uh, we ended up spending three, <coughs> which is, you know, so there, there went our profit and some. We were back in a loss making position for the award season. But then it started picking up all these awards, so all the kind of, um, you know, um, the Golden Globes, the Screen Actors, the Directors Guild, the Writers Guild just an astonishing number of awards to the extent that by this time we were already on DVD, the DVD number, DVD number started going through the roof. So then we were thinking, okay, well, we might be back in profit again a little bit. Um, since, since the Academy Awards, um, again, it's obviously we've re-released it now theatrically and it's doing very nicely. Um, and the video DVD numbers are astonishing. So we, we went from thinking we'll make a little bit to thinking we're going to be making a loss to thinking we're making a little bit more to now um, making a lot. Um, <laughs> it was an extraordinary um, story. Again, a lot of luck, but um, it was a fantastic film. So we obviously just picked a good one. Um, um, <laughs> I wish, you know, I wish all the stories were like this. There are lots of disaster stories, and you don't really hear much about those. But um... <laughs> thank God they've been censored off this panel. Thank Sorry, you for no. a, a very candid account, and uh, obviously the drugs are, are yeah. working. Thank you. Uh, 